Here's 12.3, two-way tables and probability. So um, in 12.2, we talked about independent and dependent events. So this is a recap of stuff from 12.2. It's just these sometimes get confused with compound events when we have independent and dependent events. So I wanted to draw a little contrast here. So um, it's going to be one event followed by another. Um, drawing a a card from a deck and then drawing another card from a deck. So we'll use the word and. It's one word, one event followed by another. Sometimes those events are going to affect each other. Um, that's when we're going to have dependent events like this. And if they don't affect each other, we got independent events and we multiply the probabilities. Okay. So this symbol, just to remind you, that means so we got the probability of event A times the probability of event B, assuming that event A has already happened. So if we're talking about drawing cards from a deck, the probability of pulling a king and then a queen, well, this would be the probability of pulling a king, and this would be the probability of pulling a queen, assuming that a king has already been removed from the deck, so there'd be less total cards, okay? All right, so that brings us to compound events. Um, this is where um, one, ev uh, one event where two or more outcomes are described. This is going to use the word or, okay? So there's, there's two types that we're going to look at, mutually exclusive events and inclusive events. So let's start with mutually exclusive events. Mutually exclusive ones are a little bit simpler. simpler. Um, they're compound events that cannot happen at the same time, okay? So um, here is the formula. If we've got two events that can't happen at the same time, and they're, they're, uh, they're compound events, we're just going to add the, the probability of the two events happening. Okay, So it's a little bit easier to explain what I mean with a compound event and a mutually exclusive event with an example. So here we've got one card is randomly drawn from a, stack of, a standard deck of cards. So there's the contents of a... Of a standard deck. Uh, we're going to find the probability that the one card is a jack or a queen. So I have this word or, so that's a tip off that I'm, I've am i got a compound event, okay? And, and you're not always going to be told if, if these are going to be mutually exclusive or, or, um, or inclusive events. We haven't talked about inclusive. This one is going to be mutually exclusive, but let's talk about why. So if we draw one card from a deck it could be a jack, it could be a queen, but it's not going to be a jack and a queen. So we can't pull out one card that is both of these things. That means it's mutually exclusive. It could be one or the other, but it can't be both at the same time. Okay. So that's what makes this mutually exclusive. So when I'm looking for the probability of that, I'm going to add the two probabilities together. Okay. So there are going to be four jacks in the deck out of 52 cards. And there's also going to be four queens out of 52 cards. And since we're just drawing one card and uh, we have 52 cards to choose from and are, and are favorable for both of those, okay? So when I add those together, it already has a common denominator. You could reduce both of these first if you wanted to. They both come out to 1 13th. Or you could add them together now and then reduce. Maybe I'll reduce them first since they would still have a common denominator. Might as well. If you divide 52 by 4, it's 13, okay? And then, so this is going to give me 2 thirteenths. Um, I usually just leave my probabilities as reduced fractions, but you could also make a percentage out of that by putting it into a calculator, and it would be about 15.4%, okay? It kind of makes sense. It, it, you could think about the favorable cards here would be jacks or queens. So you got these eight cards here that would work out of the total 52. So 8 out of 52 is what you'd get if you added these two fractions together, right? And that would reduce to 2 thirteenths and get you the same uh, result there, okay? All right, let's try another. Um, one card is randomly drawn from a, stack, uh, from a standard deck, um, and we're going to find the probability that it's a diamond or a heart, all right? So here are my diamonds, and... Here are my hearts. So there are no cards that are both diamonds and a heart. You're not going to get a card that's a diamond and a heart. There's no diamond of hearts or heart of diamonds. That, that doesn't make sense, right? So that means that these are mutually exclusive 
So I'm going to find the probability of each one of those things happening. So um, if you count up the diamonds, there are 13 of them. It's one-fourth of the deck because there's four suits. Um, and then there's also 13 hearts. Okay, so again, you could add these right now, or you could. it's going to be 26 out of the total 52 cards. But you could also reduce, reduce both of these. Um, 13 out of 52. If you divide 52 by 13, it equals 4. So this is it's a quarter of the deck, 13 out of 52 cards. So that is going to give us 2 fourths, which reduces to 1 half. Same thing if you got 26 out of 52, that would be 1 half, right? Or 50%. Okay. All right. There's mutually exclusive events when the, the two events cannot happen at the same time. So that brings us to inclusive events, and it gets a little trickier with inclusive events. So inclusive events, um, compound events that um, can happen at the same time. Okay. And um, here is the formula. I'm going to still take the probability of the first event plus the probability of the second event, but then I'm going to subtract out the probability that both of those things are happening at the same time. Okay, And again, it's going to be much easier to show you with an example. Okay, So here we've got one card that is randomly drawn from a deck, and we're going to find the probability that it is a queen or a heart. Okay, so we're always going to start by adding, if we're just drawing one card, we're going to add those two together. But then I've got to think about this. Is this mutually exclusive or is it inclusive? Can both of these things happen at the same time? Could I draw one card that is both a queen and a heart? And the answer is yes, there is a queen of hearts. Um, it's a little hard to see the, the uh, suits there, but... It's right there. That's the queen of hearts. Okay, so both of those things can happen at the same time. So then I want to subtract out the probability that both of those happen at the same time. Okay, so let's think through this. For my queens, I've got four out of the um, 52 cards. For the hearts, I've got 13 out of the 52 cards. But if you just add them up like this, then I will have double counted the queen of hearts because the queen of hearts is in both of those categories and I don't want to count it twice. Okay, So that's why I'm going to subtract out the probabilities that both of those things are going to happen at the same time. So there's only one card in the deck that is both a queen and a heart, so I'm going to subtract out one out of 52. That way I'm not double counting that queen of hearts. I mean, you could just count up the favorable, right? But you wouldn't double count this queen of hearts. It's just one card. So that's when, I, when I'm thinking about it uh, with, this, with this formula, I have to subtract out the both, okay? Um, so it's good to know there's 13 cards of each suit, and um, then 13 out of 52, that's also a quarter of the deck. So this is going to reduce to one-fourth, okay? This one is going to reduce to 1 13th. And then this one's already reduced. The problem with that, if you reduce everything first, well, now I don't have a common denominator, right? So it's actually better to use the unreduced fractions when we're adding or subtracting if you have a, if you have a common denominator, which you always will on these card ones because there's always a total of 52 cards. So I'm going to use this up here. So 4 plus 13 would be 17. Minus 1 would be 16. I'm going to get 16 out of the 52 cards. And then I'll reduce this. So um, 16 out of 52. Um, you can reduce both of those by 4. And it'll come out to 4 thirteenths. Or you could make a percentage out of that if you wanted. Okay. So 4 out of 13. Uh, or thirteenths probability. Okay, all right. Let's do the same kind of thing, looking for a red king. So I want the probability of a red card plus the probability of a king. And then I want to think: Well, are there cards that are red and kings? Um, so it's hard that you can't see it on here. There's no colors, but you have to kind of know that the diamonds are red and. The hearts are red. So those are my red cards. Okay. I'm going to, here, I'll use for this example, I'll use this, this green highlighter to, um, to look at these. So um, are there red kings? Yes, there are. Right? These are all the red cards. 
and then here's my kings. And there is some overlap, right? There's the king of diamonds and the king of hearts in there. So there is overlap. So these are inclusive events. They, both, they can both happen at the same time. So I want to account for that. I don't want to double count the red kings because they fit into both of these categories. Okay. So the red cards are going to be 26 out of the 52 cards. Or that would reduce to one half, but I'm leaving it unreduced just to make it easy to add these. Okay. The kings, there's four out of the 52 cards. And then there's two cards that are red kings, these two, right? King of diamonds, king of hearts. So there we go, okay? And then when I add these all up, let's see, I've got 30 minus two would be 28 out of 52. Um, that is going to, you could divide those both by four and that will reduce to 7 thirteenths then. Oops, I'm off screen a little bit, sorry. So 7 thirteenths probability, or you could do the, uh, the percentage version of that too, okay? All right, last problem. Not um, using the deck of cards anymore. A number cube is rolled. Find the probability that it comes up three or odd. So since I'm just rolling the cube once, I'm going to be adding my probabilities together, but then I've got to think, can both of those things happen at the same time? Um, and the answer is yes, they can. Right? If this comes up three, well then it's three and it's odd. That's an odd number and it's the number three. So I don't want to double count the three because it's in both of these categories. Okay, so probability of rolling a three, that's one out of six things that can happen. The odd numbers, that's one, three, and five. That's three out of the six things that can happen. And there's one number that's both of those things, that's the number three. Okay, so when I add that all up, I get three out of six, which is one half, so 50%. Um, so I like this example because you can see that this, this formula works. So, you know, you can just think about the, uh, the possible outcomes. One, two, three, four, five, and... Six. Okay, and you just think about how many are favorable. Well, any anything that's odd or a three. So the favorable ones are the ones I'm circling. It's three out of the six, right? So it works out. But you wouldn't double count that three. That's why if you were using this formula, you'd have to subtract out um, the, the probability that both happen at the same time. It's three out of six. Okay, that's the end of the section, and I'll see you next time.